in the last lecture we have studied or uh, we have cited the point that is threats to biodiversity in that we have covered habitat loss poaching of wildlife man wildlife conflicts okay and in today's lecture we are going to study a new topic or the new threat to the biodiversity is invasive species or biological invasion okay so before we assess the impact of invasive invasive species on the biodiversity let us first understand what exactly is introduced species okay so species that have been intentionally or unintentionally introduced by humans to an ecosystem or region in which they were not naturally present previously okay so it may come by accidentally so that is the meaning of unintentionally okay and intentionally that means if to cure pest or any new fancy uh, species or which is a beautiful species may intentionally introduce into a another ecosystem okay that is called as a introduced species okay such introduction are always mediated by are always mediated by human in case where species are introduced intentionally the reason can be uh, reason can include population control of some native species for boosting agriculture and fisheries for conservation efforts for ornamental value or for economic value that means for different perspective different species are introduced into different ecosystem so the reasons or the causes are that population control of native species suppose any species which is feeding on another insect okay or the any uh, organism from different trophic level okay so that species or introduced species can be a uh, what is a natural uh, pest controller okay for boosting agriculture or maybe some species of plants is helping for boosting of agriculture okay and fisheries so suppose ornamental fishes which are present over worldwide okay that can be introduced in the business of fisheries okay or any uh, the high value or the the species which is giving a high value or more economical in the market okay so for that also the new species may introduced in the ecosystem for conservation effect efforts or for ornamental value okay so these are some <coughs> aspects or the reasons for which the introduced species is or the different species is introduced in the ecosystem so transportation of goods and people introduction of non native species into a new system ecosystem that is by transportation of goods and people okay the <coughs> introduction of non native species in the ecosystem can happen okay so first we'll see what is a topic okay that before we assess the impact of sorry that is the species okay which is invading the another ecosystem okay that is not only related to only plants and animal but a different even microbes also okay these are called as a invasive species since these are uh, the living things the invasion or the successful uh, survival of the species into another ecosystem that is called as a biological invasion so example of unintentional introduction include uh, introductions of aquatic species for both marine and fresh water through ships uh, ships dumping ballasts uh, ballasts water taken on at a port of origin into water as a destination port okay numerous such exotic species have been introduced into various countries across the globe by humans so this may be in unintentionally or intentionally also in many cases exotic species fail to adapt to a new ecosystem and die off 
in other case, some cases they successfully adapt and serve, serve the purpose for which they were introduced. So that means to become uh, exotic species, exotic is that is not native species coming from the another region like the exotic food that is not an uh, natives food or the <coughs> the original food which is grown or is you eat in that culture but it is from the another region same as the exotic species is from the another region so exotic species fail to adapt okay so when another species or the this introduced species that is exotic species is not able to survive in a particular environment or in the new ecosystem okay then of course that species die off okay but if the exotic species is able to survive successfully that means the species can adapt can survive and reproduce and increase the population in that case we can say it is successfully adapt or it is fulfilling the purpose uh, for which the species were introduced okay in however in few cases exotic species not just adapt in the new in the new region but also undergo extensive population expansion this lead to alteration of ecological conditions of the ecosystem so to an extent that exotic species becomes threatening for native species now first the important thing is to become a invasive species that is exotic species after successfully adapting in the particular ecosystem will become invasive species okay that is the species invading the other ecosystem or region that's why the topic is we are studying it is biological invasion okay that means the species which is non native invading the other ecosystem or region and becomes in invasive species okay to become a invasive species there are certain factors which are needed okay that is they should not be a predator for the that species okay or if they are present the number should be less the resources should be in appropriate amount or quantity that is food resources or anything third thing is they should have a mating partner okay fourth one the species should resistant to the diseases if there is a diseases in the ecosystem or the partic at that particular trophic level for special species then that species should have a uh, immune system which is equipped for the fighting with disease okay or the parasitic infection fifth one is if there is a competitor okay then species should be able uh, that much strong that it can fight with another competitor okay and if the conditions are if there is no competitor then it is a well well good condition for that in, in invasive species okay and the fifth one is or the <coughs> another thing is the in, invasive species should adapt the environment of that new area or the new ecosystem so there are some points by by this condition or if these conditions are fulfilled then that exotic species will become invasive species okay how <coughs> that is that exotic species not just adapt in the new region but also undergo extensive population expansion then only we can say that this invasive species is uh, able to survive successfully okay that leads alteration of ecological condition of that ecosystem to an extent that exotic species become threatening for the native species because the new competitor is invading or taking a place in the ecosystem okay, which is not native for that invasive species and even that is not a part of that ecosystem 
So, of course, there is a big threat for that ecosystem. We are going to see examples. In such a scenario, the exotic species is now termed as an invasive species. Okay. So, invasive species can harm native species through competition for resources, predation or by causing diseases. Okay. That is, invasive species is already uh, diseased okay, or having certain kind of infection. Then, it may spread into an ecosystem okay, or it may, it may harm to native species. The introduction and establishment of species beyond its natural range where it thrives and expands considerably is called as a biological invasion. Okay. Introduction and establishment of species. Establishment means able to survive successfully and increasing population beyond its natural range. That means, the area which is not a native habitat where it thrives and expands considerably okay, is called as a biological invasion. Such invasions can harm native species, alter ecological interaction within an ecosystem and even affect socio-economic conditions of a community or region. So, alter ecological interaction, of course, we have studied that it can harm native species because it is a biggest competition for the natural ecosystem or the sorry native species of the ecosystem. Alter the ecological interaction within an ecosystem that means the invasive species it try to replace the native species. Okay. As we know the higher the number of individual or higher number of the population that species wins. Okay. So, that is a uh, law in the ecology usually studies the, in the Lotka Volterra law that higher the number of population and if the mm, population is the, within the carrying capacity then that species wins okay? and even affect socio-economic conditions of community or a region. Okay? So, that may ultimately impact on socio-economic conditions of the that region. Okay. So, impact of invasive species have been have some unique characteristics of or traits that enable them to become invasive in the environment where it is introduced. So, those include fast growth, right, the rapid multiplication or rapid reproduction rate, higher dispersal ability, okay, that is a uh, important thing that the higher dispersal ability that means can increase the population in a higher uh, the at a greater surface area okay, or in the large area. So, higher the surface uh, sorry higher the population higher the dispersal ability that means to become extinct okay, or the chances to become extinct is less. So, the species which is widely dispersed okay, that means higher the number of population. For that species the extinction rate is low tolerate to a wide range of environmental conditions. So, maybe these conditions are may humidity, temperature, rainfall or other conditions. Okay. Now, <coughs> wide tolerate a wide range of environmental conditions. So, if you study according to the ecology, the species who tolerate a moderate range of tolerance can able to survive successfully in the nature. Okay. It should not be lower or it should not be higher. So, moderate range of tolerance okay, can uh, give okay, or if the it is present, then species can able to live successfully. Okay, and some of the produce toxin secretion which keep away from the from any predator. Okay. That means a species should have or it has <coughs> some kind of extra character okay, by which it is getting a protection from the predator. Okay. That means the chances of reducing the population is uh, are less. Okay. 
now invasive species can ha cause harm to biodiversity in many ways so invasive species often do not have any natural predator in new environment as the species is new okay so the prey predator or the independence of each trophic level to e one another okay it is not for the invasive species because it is a new factor which is introduced or uh, in the new ecosystem so to set and find a predator okay this that is no need for invasive species to find a predator but as we know the ecosystem or the each tropic level or in the food chain it is working on this base that is one organism is eaten by another one so as there is no predator that means there is a higher chance to increase population this invasive species can come out of native species sorry compete uh, can out compete native species for food habitat and other resources and cause them diseases prevent native species from reproducing or in some cases can prey upon the native species okay so this is a big threat to biodiversity because the as a new species is introduced that means a invasive species it is a biggest competition for the native species okay because <coughs> as we know in the environment or in the ecosystem the resources and the carrying capacity is fixed okay so it may change according to the conditions so food habitat and other resources okay for that there is a competition between invasive species and native species okay even invasive species may come with any kind of parasite or uh, the ma microbe which can cause diseases so this is the big threat for the native species prevent native species from producing or reproducing or in some cases they can prey upon the native species that means that is you can imagine how much it is a big threat to biodiversity or a one trophic level okay or the one <coughs> level or the total population of the single species okay so invasive species can alter the food web in an ecosystem by destroying or replacing native food resources okay these species themselves are of little food value for world wildlife as they are not the natural preferences for the native wild species okay in such cases the native species look for easy food option in human habitation thereby increasing chances of human wildlife conflict okay as <coughs> because of the competition sometimes the native species may lose that competition okay and they have to eliminate or they have to separate from that ecosystem okay though they are part or they were part of the eco that ecosystem but <coughs> due to competition with invasive species okay and in that case if native species loses that competition then they have to leave or they have to separate from that ecosystem or the food chain and they rely on the other options okay for the food and that's why they come into human habitation and there is another reason for human wildlife conflict some invasive species can change conditions in an ecosystem such as soil chemistry or can increase the intensity of wildfires okay so <coughs> we'll see there are certain examples of invasive species which are in uh, that uh, can with the help of this examples we can study how invasive species are threat to biodiversity so first example is of kudzu plant okay so <coughs> it is which is a native this plant okay it is native to japan and to the united states that is in the 1876 for the prevention of soil erosion and also as a ornamental vine okay that is it is native to japan and it is transported or it is introduced into united state in 1876 okay 
so it was the main aim is to prevent soil erosion but along with that for the ornamental vine okay so the plant adapted so well that its new environment that is grows up to 1 foot each uh, in each day okay so that's that means species has adapt in such a way that that growth of this uh, invasive species is higher or the growth rate is higher as compared to the native species okay so it is now considered a weed species in united states covering million acres in south uh, south southeast part of the country okay so that is a kurzu plant okay the another one is that brown tree snake so accidental introduction of this brown tree snake which is native to salomon island that is uh, to and it is introduced to government island in 1950 this has led to extinct of three species of birds three species three to five species of reptiles endemic to island okay that means the introduction of invasive species okay there is a alteration in the ecosystem or the species which are present in the ecosystem so as you can observe extinction of species of birds and five species of reptiles so all these links are interconnected that is in the food web the another one the another example is the invasion of the zebra mussels okay that is <coughs> which are native to great lakes of north america okay and which are introduced sorry which are uh, which is native to europe and they uh, were introduced into uh, lakes of great lakes of north america that is prior to 1988 in ballast okay or ballast water this mussels in the great lakes led to millions of dollars being spent in clean up okay that means uh, it was introduced for to cleaning water or to maintain the water quality and the mussels have uh, also altered the ecology of the lakes thereby threatening native mollusk population okay so that is a competition for the native species the another example is toad that is cane toad so it is which is a native to south america okay and south and the introduction of this cane toad which is native to south america to queensland in the australia okay in 1935 means biological pest control against the cane beetle that was destroying the sugar cane plantation in australia so around hundreds of toads uh, were bought from south america and slowly released in uh, in the field okay in queensland that is in the australia and the toads have rapidly multiplied in uh, numbers and they they reach population that is from 200 to millions okay or <coughs> that is day by day thousands and till millions so the species now occupying a range more than 50000 square kilometer in australia and has resulted in declining population number of native spe amphibian species okay so amphibians are those who can live on water uh, as well as on land so frog toads are the example of amphibian animals so the key fact or the one of the characteristic which toad has is 
द मल्टीप्लीकेशन ओके और द हायर रिप्रोडक्शन रेट दैट्स वाई द टोड इज इवन अडेप्टिंग टू न्यू एनवायरमेंट और द अडेप्शन अडेप्टेशन टू न्यू एनवायरमेंट दैट इज वन ऑफ द फैक्टर इट इज हेल्पिंग फॉर लिविंग इन दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया और बिकम इनवेजिव स्पीशीज ओके सो अनदर एग्जाम्पल इज दैट इट इज फॉर प्लांट्स ओके एंड इट इज इन इंडिया so it is the species which you must have observed normally okay even in the uh, the forest area okay <coughs> or even the by road side that is called as the lantana camera so it is uh, the introduction of lantana camera in early 19th century as a as an ornamental plant so this plant species native to south america and uh, that <coughs> and central america okay so it can grow individually in clumps or as an uh, thickest crowding and uh, the nowadays that thickening crowding out native species and decreasing biodiversity in some rainforest areas okay of western ghats they are in a such a dense population that prevention prevent the generation of forest okay so lantana has invaded large expanse of the pasture land forest a hollow area across the country okay and that is a major problem in western ghats and the himalayan himalayan forest areas causing death of the native species because it is a great competition for them forest fire and also leading to human wildlife wildlife conflict so these are the indirect effect of the invasion of plant species okay the next one is water hyacinth okay so introduction of this uh, water hyacinth uh, in in the late 19th century that is same with the lantana camera so by british it was introduced by british official as an ornamental plant in the water body okay the plant which is native to south america has a beautiful large purple violet color flowers okay and so it is not clear in the picture but you can observe here that some part it is violet color flowers making it popular ornamental plant in favorable conditions the aquatic plants can go rapidly and uh, form a dense mat over water surface so that is a common condition or the norm uh, usually we have seen or we usually see on the water body okay but what is the disadvantage of this invasive species what is the impact on the ecosystem is as they are forming mat on the water body so the reduces the amount of sunlight and dissolve oxygen uh, in the aquatic uh, water system or underground uh, ecosystem sorry that uh, underground wa- uh, vegetation so because of this mat or the bed which is formed on the uh, water surface so pe- there is a low penetration of sun rays in the aqua uh, that water body and the dissolved oxygen is not that sorry aerial oxygen cannot be dissolved in the water or that the reservoir okay so there is because of the less sun rays okay the vegetation cannot be grow the second thing the small microbes or the zoo plankton which are dependent on this vegetation will not get enough food resulting there is a less food for the next trophic level that is small fish and even the number of small spe- uh, fishes is less then the top most consumer that is maybe either fish okay will not get enough food food 
so likewise the there will be a disruption or the disturbance in the ecosystem okay so there is a uh, impact of water hyacinth or the invasive species okay so uh, it is also uh, in the india the water hyacinth was uh, introduced by terror of bengal okay as it caused a large scale death and scarcity of fresh water fishes in the west bengal okay where it call uh, that state where fishing is a major occupation okay or the source of economic generation and along with that fish is the main item of the food okay that's why it is called as a terror of bengal the next one is congress grass okay it is more famous so it is also called as a gajar grass okay uh, this parthenium so it is the accidental introduction of gajar grass Okay, it is in the nineteen fifties. That is Parthenium, which is a small plant native to South America, which is believed to be accidentally reached India, along with a wit consignment imported from South America. Okay, so the introduction was uh, in the nineteen fifty four, and there was a Congress government was there was ruling. that's why this grass is called as a congress grass so when india was facing the shortage of food okay that is a that was a big shortage of the food at that time so because of the social eco, uh, or the political issues or the factors there is after independence okay so the help was given by the us government and sorry american government and with the with that seeds this grass was introduced to india okay and parthenium is uh, the rapidly growing medium sized plant okay as you can see it is having a short uh or not very big tree like structure okay and the species is now present is almost in all states of india now it the as per as per the study it is reducing the yield uh and is by 40% or because of this the yield lo losses are up to off up to 50% per, 40% okay in the western himalayas okay the northern north east states or peninsular region are most vulnerable to this invasive species okay along with that the important thing is parthenium is toxic to livestock so it causes health problem in humans skin problem allergic and it is a major occupational hazards for farmers in india okay so uh, it is that one of the 100 most sorry 100 most invasive species of world okay in that list this parthenium is enlisted okay uh the another one is called as a uh vile vile tikkar okay that is a prosopis so in the normal name is babul okay so which is a plant native to mexico and was introduced by britishers to delhi uh in 1930 okay when delhi uh, was being constructed okay in order to increase the greenery of that capital city okay that species were introduced the it is rough sorry dwarf resi uh, resistant short tree okay which is very similar appearance with the khejri tree that is a uh, prosopis that another species which is uh, native to india and its roots can grow up to a that is uh that is deep in the water so deep in the soil in search of water so <coughs> it is spread in a semi dry region okay 
ओके सो मोस्टली यू कैन ऑब्जर्व इन तमिलनाडु राजस्थान हरियाणा दिल्ली ओके एंड इवन सम पार्ट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र ऑल्सो सो इट ग्रोज फास्ट एक्सट्रैक्ट लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर ओके एंड न्यूट्रिएंट्स फ्रॉम सॉइल एंड इट इज द वन ऑफ द इनविजिव स्पीशीज फॉर दैट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वी हैव फेस्ड अ हैबिटॉट लॉस इशू ऑफ फॉर द नेटिव स्पीशीज ओके एंड इट इज ऑल्सो सॉरी इट इज अ पॉइजनस द सी मेनली सीड्स आर पॉइजनस फॉर एनिमल्स ओके सो दीज आर द इनविजिव स्पीशीज which are found in india okay so the next topic is conservation of biodiversity okay so there are <coughs> what is the need of conservation or why this topic is in your syllabus so <clears throat> as we know that because of all these threats or anthropogenic activities we are facing the issues that is loss of biodiversity so in india if you observe there are three hot spots of biodiversity and as you see the numbers or the list which is in the iocn that most of the species are getting included into either endangered species or they were became becoming vulnerable or they are at the threat to become an extinct okay so it is important to take care of this scenario because as we know each each species is important in the ecosystem to maintain the balance okay so so the that value of biodiversity is due to genomi, uh, genetic maybe commercial medical aesthetic and ecological importance okay so gradually we are realizing that is it is not just a game to be haunted okay rather it is a gift of nature to be nurtured and enjoy okay so <coughs> that's why there is a need to conservation of biodiversity okay so by <coughs> so there is enormous value of biodiversity due to their genetic commercial and all these values so generally we are consuming becoming realize that it is a gift okay now how to conserve the biodiversity it is done by usually it is done by two methods one is in situ conservation and other one is ex situ conservation so what are these conservation methods first one is in situ conservation that is within habitat this is achieved by protection of wild flora and fauna in nature itself for example biosphere reserve national park sanctuaries reserve forest okay and the another one is ex situ conservation that is outside habitat this is done by establishment of gene banks seed banks zoos botanical gardens culture collection okay so one by one we'll see what is in situ and ex situ conservation and what are the different methods uh, in in situ and ex situ conservation the in situ conservation of biodiversity includes the protection of species within their natural habitats or in the protected areas that is on the site conservation that means where the organism is naturally living that is at the native place or in the natural habitat that is in the ecosystem that's why this is called as a on the site conservation okay so in situ conservation can be defined as the conservation of ecosystem and natural habitat and the maintenance and recovery of viable population of species in their natural surroundings and in the case of demo- domesticated or cultivated species in the surrounding where they have developed in the in the distinctive properties okay that means the conservation of ecosystem and natural habitat so we are 
maintaining or conserving ecosystem and natural habitat of animal that means the conservation area is itself natural habitat and the maintenance and recovery of viable population of species that means we are tracking the pop uh, the recovery of the population and natural in the natural surrounding in the case of domesticated or cultivated species in the surrounding where they develop the distinctive properties okay now in 1969 iucn has declared some defining characteristics of natural park were further explained in 1971 to make a concept of national park okay more cl uh, clearly defined that is uh, the national park has a statutory legal protection against human interference and prohibition of exploitation of natural resources so in short we can say by national park is an area dedicated for the conservation of wildlife along with its environment okay so <clears throat> and it is also uh, meant for the enjoyment through tourism but without impairing or damaging environment so more than 3000 national parks have been established throughout the world and out of uh, which nearly one third is confined to asia okay a india is a distinctive in abundance and multiplicity of its flora and wildlife and has about 166 authorized national parks throughout the country so india is also accommodating among about 515 animal sanctuaries which are called as a wildlife sanctuaries so what are sanctuaries that is a protected area where killing hunting shooting or capturing of wildlife is prohibited except under the control of highest authority that is government authority okay so the permit that uh, its private ownership rights are permissible and the forest operations are also permitted to an extent that they do not affect wildlife okay adversely so <coughs> national parks and sanctuaries have been established to preserve wildlife in their natural habitat okay so there are certain examples of uh, natural wild sanctuaries okay and national parks so these are the methods or by conserving this area we are conserve doing conservation of the biodiversity so we'll see some of the example that is a dachigam uh, uh, the dachigam wildlife sanctuary it is in the jammu and kashmir okay so <coughs> the sanctuary is located in western himalayas and is home to wide variety of flora and fauna with grassland pastures meadows with rocky cliffs and rocky outcrops okay so Mm, the hangul or the kashmir stag okay it is the species which is main attraction in the dachigam wildlife sanctuary along with that leopard musk deer himalayan black bear himalayan brown bear otter are few of many different species uh, can be found here okay the another one is jim corbett that is uh, in the uttarakhand is nainital district was established in 1936 so that located uh, that amidst mixed terrain of uh, deciduous forest and mountains pine forest okay so it is a famous national park of india okay and what you can observe in jim corbett it is bengal tiger leopard leopard cat elephant sambar deer golden jackal etc the another one is that is sundarban wildlife sanctuary okay <coughs> mm, that is in the west bengal and declared as a national park in 1984 uh, the main attraction is here that is the bengal tiger okay and leopard cat fishing cat and over 
seventy different species of endemic birds. So they, these are the some wildlife sanctuaries and parks are enlisted. That is the Manus Wildlife Sanctuary. Okay, it is in the Assam. Kaziranga National Park. Uh, it is also in the Assam. Okay, and the main attraction is one horned rhino. Okay, now the numbers are very, or the population is very no low. Now it is in the threat. Or it is in the age, the verge of the becoming extinct because the population is very less, okay, and that are conserved in the national park of Kaziranga. Okay, along with that, you can observe water buffalo, swamp deer, monitor lizard, and spectacle cobra. Next is Ranathambore National Park. It is in the Rajasthan. So the main attraction is here tiger, but along with that, the hyena, sloth bear, and cheetah. These are the uh, the main attractions. Next one is uh, that is Keoladio Ghana Bird Sanctuary. Okay. <coughs> so it is in the Rajasthan. So three hundred species of birds. Uh, that is mostly migratory birds are coming over here are uh, the main attraction of bird watchers okay and it is famous for the birds okay the next one is uh, the gir park okay uh, it is located in gujarat and the main attraction is uh, indian lion okay that is asiatic lions leopard sloth bear jungle cats spectacle cobra okay and several rare species of birds the another national park is kana which is in the uh, madhya pradesh okay and here also the main attraction is tiger along with that leopard wild dog jackal sloth bear are present okay so the park is famous for being the original source of rudyard kipling that imagine it while writing the jungle book although the story was actually set in the pench national park in india okay so kana kana national park was established in 1955 and it is a main attraction for tourists then another one is uh, the pariyar wildlife sanctuary it is in the kerala okay and the <coughs> the attraction is tiger and elephants okay along with that you can observe a uh, that flying squirrel which is different from uh, which is uh, native to maharashtra okay tiger elephant that is wild pig and lion tail macaw okay now along with that what are different sanctuaries are present there is a bandipur uh duwara and sariska okay so these are different national parks are uh, in india and what are different sanctuaries that is hazari bag which is in the bihar sultanpur bird sanctuary is in the haryana uh it is famous for migratory bird nal sarovar bird sanctuary it is in uh, gujarat it is famous for water birds okay then abohar wild sanctuary it is in the punjab and jalpara uh, wildlife sanctuary it is in the west bengal so it is uh, famous for elephants tigers and rhinoceros okay now next uh, the another uh, way or the area if we protect that is in the in situ conservation is biosphere reserve the concept of biosphere reserve that means conserve some representative ecosystem uh for long, long term okay or that whole ecosystem for long term in in situ conservation that is called as a biosphere reserve so the concept of biosphere reserve was launched in 1975 as a part of unesco's man and biosphere that is mab program a biosphere reserve should have following components or if you see the structure uh there are different zones okay the first one is core zone fully protected and natural areas which is the last 
sorry least influenced by human activity this area is under legal protection and entry is allowed with permission for some specific purpose so destructive sampling for scientific investigation is not allowed okay so the center part that means if this is a area which is of the biodiversity and we want to conserve that okay or we want to do a in situ conservation then that biosphere reserve is generally categorized into three zones okay the first or the central zone is called as a core zone where the wildlife animals are actually living okay so this is the most protected area where the human activities are strictly prohibited and even the researchers or any for any development or for any project okay the permission is not uh, given by a uh, government okay or it is not get by government easily okay next one is buffer zone it is surrounds a key area which keeps keep a wide range of resources new strategies and activities related to research and education okay so in a buffer area so slight uh, relaxation is given for education and research okay in the transition zone that is the last zone okay the outermost region of the biosphere reserve which is characterized by active involvement of local people to reserve uh, people reserve management in this area activities like settlement cropping forestry recreation or and other economic activities which are in harmony with biodiversity conservation are allowed okay that means human interference or the human activities are allowed only in the the last zone that is a transition zone okay so while moving in the this biosphere okay it is generally it is not allowed for the the tourist even also okay or any researcher so when you are visiting any such area the first zone we'll see it is a transition zone okay where the human activities you can observe then in the buffer area the government is allowing to study for study and research but in the core area it is not allowed because these are the wild animals so <coughs> there should not be any conflict between human and wildlife ecosystem okay. the main function of biosphere reserve are landscapes and the ecosystem conservation so conservation of the species and genetic resources encouragement of traditional resource utilization so as we are reserving landscape or the large part of india ultimately the ecosystem is getting conserved okay and as we know the ecosystem is getting protection that means the species and the genetic diversity is getting protection okay encouragement of traditional source utilization promotion of socially culturally and ecologically sustainable economic development okay. and all these things are supporting for research on biodiversity conservation monitoring education and information transfer per pertaining to environment and biodiversity conservation issues at local national and global level okay that means to focus on species specific project like tiger project uh, project elephant project crocodile okay so we'll see what are the different projects along with that there is a one more project it is olive ridley turtles that means a turtle conservation 